Hello again everyone, today we're going to try and modify uh, PS2. To do this we're going to use screwdriver, glue gun, soldering iron, some solder, some kynar wire and a mod V4 mod chip. First thing you can do with your PS2 is identify what version you've got. If you flip it around to the back you'll see a code on the serial here. Mine says SCPH 5003, and it's got a little A underneath. I've checked online and it, um, this is a B10 mainboard. I'll post a link in the description so you can see how you can identify what version you've got. So first things first, let's get this guy open. If you flip it upside down, you'll see that there's these little like stubs. Just get your nail in, or a flat headed screwdriver if you don't have nails. And just pry them all out, so I'll come to you when I've done that. Right, so with them all removed, put them somewhere safe and down each one of these holes you'll find some regular uh, Phillips screws so just go ahead and remove the 8 screws. So now with our 8 case screws removed what we want to do is turn the unit around again so we're looking at the back and you'll notice here we've got a warranty sticker so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it with a, a razor blade so I've got a razor blade here what I'm going to do is just make a cut just cut down it like that all the way down cut in from this side here like so. Right, with all that done, we should be able to just lift the lid off. I'm going to take the expansion back out as well. When you're lifting the lid off, um, what you need to be careful of is where these reset and eject buttons are, there is a ribbon cable connecting to the main board here. So we need to come out a bit. Basically, lift it off and lift it this way, like fold it over, and then disconnect the ribbon cable. So I'm going to do that now. I'll try to do it now. Might be a bit difficult one handed. There we go. So, sort of lift it forward off the front of the DVD drive. Like so. Oh, no ribbon anymore. Design must have changed with these V10 ones. There used to be a ribbon cable, so the design's changed. Well, that's quite handy. So, even easier to open. But if you have an older version, be mindful that there might be a ribbon cable there. So, first of all, take off the controller parts. Two screws. And then there's a ribbon cable connecting it to the board. I'm going to take the ribbon cable out of it on this end and leave it connected to the board. So, with those two screws out, lift up and forward like so and oh it's well dusty in here we're going to give it a clean once we've got it disassembled but then just push it forward like that and there's a little clip here just pull it up like so and pull the ribbon cable out the front like so and then we can just move the controller part somewhere safe let's we'll just lift up this power unit and it just can hang over here and we're going to remove the fan assembly now which has got one screw to remove it and be careful actually we're not going to remove that just yet because the ribbon cable connecting that to the bar which we just remembered about so basically we're going to turn the entire unit upside down like so and lift the bottom off like so here you can see the power board so we're just going to disconnect that the switch power switch and then remove these four screws that are holding in the power board with those four screws removed the power board should just lift up but it's got like a pin header there so I need to give it a bit of force well just lift off the pin header work well um, put that somewhere safe and remove this bit of plastic shielding just pry it up and it'll come free and then we can just lift the hard drive bear that'll just come free now so remove that and then at the back here, you can see there's a bit of tape there and a bit of tape there. A bit, of angle. a bit dusty, but basically just peel it back. I'll just tear it like so. And now we can lift the ribbon cable free, which powers the fan at the back of the unit. Now we've done that. If we turn it upside down again, we can now. I should be able to now just get this fan unit free. I'll just pull away like so and it comes free. Now with all that removed we can now remove the DVD drive which we were trying to do earlier. So what we do is we just let's come from the side here. So we're just gonna pull it free from the board like so and do that the same for them all. Um on these ones pull the blue bit that blue bit to get them free. 
If you can't reach in and pull them, use some needle nose pliers. And again, only pull on the blue bit. So, you see there? Clasp on the blue, pull free. And the same for the last one here. Clasp on that and pull free. Like so. So, that's all the ribbon cables disconnected. Although, there's one more ribbon cable that connects a laser to the main board. So, what we're going to do now is slip backwards like that, and we should. Yeah, see the last ribbon cable. And do this front clip like so and lift backwards gently so we can access the last ribbon. And there's some clips at the back which you should come free of. Once you've lifted lift once you've unclipped the front clip, lift it forward a bit and you should come free of the back clamps and then carefully lift back to access this last ribbon cable and then we're going to remove this from the laser unit there's a bit of it's a different than normal kind of cla clamps you pull down to like unlock it but you don't lift up you just pull down and it unlocks it and then you pull free but the laser unit might travel backwards like mine did there we go that's it free flip upside down again and you'll find some screws in the bottom of this shielding so we've got, let's stand it up like this. So you've got four screws here, one, two, three, four silver screws. Silver screw here and a silver screw down here. At the top, two larger screws, silver, there'll be gold on some units, and then one more small silver screw. So remove all them, and then we're access the main board. Right, now with all our screws removed, we can lift off the shielding. Um, it might be a bit stiff to do, again, because it's never come apart but if you just lift there where the ribbon cable is and pry down on the USB ports you get it free. I've forgotten one screw, I can see it already. Last screw here in the back of the shielding. Okay so that's all the screws removed now. So again if we come at the back and just lift here like so. Let's flip around to the other side. Lift here like so and it's free. There it just pops off. So remove it and put it somewhere safe. And now we've got access to the main board. One board V4 there. They come with a self adhesive back. Um, and what you do, the get installed the, the placement's the same in every board. So this chip here, we just stick it on top of this chip here. So line it up flat. Bit of pressure. And that just holds it in place. What I want to do first is just apply apply solder to all these pads and you can see I've done it on these first five pads here but I'm going to just apply a pool of solder to all the pads it's just apply heat to the point just like tin and wire apply heat to the point for a couple of seconds bring the solder there and you get a pool of solder so we're just going to do that to all the points now so it's ready for us to solder wires to in a bit There we go, so that's that entire row done. And then bring solder to it, so you get a layer of a pool of solder on each pad. Like so. So, heat the pad, solder to it. Hit the pad, solder to it, and the last one. Now that'll make soldering wires to it a lot easier. Just applying a small bit of solder to each, each of these points, as you can see here. Just trying to get the wires in easier, because they're very difficult points to solder to. Right, that's the first wire in. That's the second cable in. third cable in, fourth cable in. Right, so my camera battery ran out uh, last time, so I put these last two wires in on that section.
Right, so I've just glued those points because they were really fiddly to get in and I want them to stay in. I don't want to have to redo them. Right, so my next step is soldering to these chip legs here, which are very, very small. These look harder than any. You can see those legs were bigger and they were hard. These are smaller. I've got four wires to do here. But for these, there are some alternate points. So we're going to try solder here, and if we can't do it, we're going to go to the alternate points. It's quite hard to see. The other two points are four legs apart. There you go, so that's those four points in. Very, very hard. Hardest points I've ever soldered. Okay, so that's Y in. And then those points on the chip in. Three point three volts in there. So I'm gonna glue that now as well. So that's the S cable in there. Um, before we glue it, we're just going to put the ground in. Right, so that's our ground point in. So that's over there. The S point and the ground point. So we're going to glue both of them now. There we go. So that's resetting. And that's actually all the wires soldered in. Right, so with all our wires soldered onto the board now, we're now ready to solder the other ends onto the chip. That's iron. That's G in. Next we do B. That's B in. Right, so that's those four points in. I, G, B and A. Y in. So that's what he's setting. That's grounded. Right, so that's the 3.3 volt in. So that's W in. That's R in. That's B in. That's U in. That's T in. That's Q in. That's P in. So that's O in. N in. And that's M in. So that's SX in. So that's all our points soldered in now. So very, very tricky. Let's uh, tidy it up with some glue. Right, so that's our finished install with now glue on, so it's tidied up. Uh, next step is just testing. So that's it for part one. If you enjoyed this video, please rate and subscribe, and join us in part two when we reassemble and test the console. Bye, everybody.